And then when you understand where it came from, now you can start letting it flow away and maybe approaching everything in your life from a different angle. Hello everyone, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and this is our weekly angelic message for the week beginning January 20th, 2020. So before we get started here, first of all, a warm welcome to all of my new subscribers. I am so happy you are here and of course a big thank you to all of my supporters who have been extremely loyal since I've been on. (laughs) I really do appreciate your support and because we have a lot of new people coming in, if you would like to get a personal reading with me, Just go to my website at angelsouls444.com, but please make sure you carefully read about wait time, format, refund policy, you know, all of those kinds of things, and make sure you know what you are agreeing to before you purchase something, okay? I do have a video about how I approach readings and why. I have had some things popping up recently, and I think it's just because people, you know, they've never gotten a reading with me before, so that's cool. Just, you know, go look up that information and you will be well informed. Please also make sure that your PayPal matches up with your request, okay? If you choose to use PayPal, you can use Stripe on my site as well. But what I'm having happen is that there's a bit of a mess and some confusion happening because maybe your PayPal is under one name and one email and your request is under another. I can't match up the payments, okay? So if you can just kind of double check that before you put your payment through, that helps out a lot. So let's get into this week's message. Oh wait, no, I can't get into this week's message. (laughs) Again, because we have new people. There are courses available on gumroad.com. Some of them are still over at Teachable. All the links are down below and a special thank you to my Patreon supporters as well. Now let's really get into it, okay? (laughs) So we have all these twos going on at the start of the week, right? So this is about harmony, balance, seeing where we tend to get a little overcritical of ourselves and of others. Yeah, the need for perfection has to kind of dissipate here because we didn't, we did not incarnate for perfection. Rather, we came here to experience a range of emotions, right? So you have to go through a lot of life experiences in order to have (laughs) those emotions, right? So when we're constantly trying to avoid the bad, we're living in a defensive mode. And in that defensive mode, you might be very sensitive to everything. I am one of these people. It's going to be a huge lesson for me as well. Um, But always uh, being suspicious of others. What are they doing? I don't know if I want to hang out with that person. Judgment, you know, all of those kinds of things. I feel like this is a week where that's really going to come to our attention, okay? Uh, In one way or another, I think something might come up where you realize, it's not like somebody forces you to understand this, it's like you do it and then you see yourself, (laughs) right? You see yourself doing this and you're, you're kind of like, oh, whoa, okay, realization happening right now, I don't, why am I being so critical? Why am I being so demanding? Why, what is that? And it's usually because we are sort of quaking in ourselves and we might feel uncomfortable with the changes that are coming up. We might feel uncomfortable with what we are learning about ourselves. And as I've been saying, the density blasts, all the stuff kind of coming up to the surface to be cleared away. I know I have been experiencing this quite a bit in dreams. (laughs) Comment down below how it's been happening for you. But for me, the dreams have been crazy. Um, ex-boyfriends that I haven't thought of in ages, suddenly having a very vivid dream about them and waking up and realizing what I'm still hanging on to, right? The annoyance, the feeling out of control or feeling controlled, you know? And those were things that for me, I realized, oh my gosh, I'm still hanging on to that. And so maybe there are certain situations where I feel like someone's trying to control me and I, I put up a boundary and be like, no, you're not going to do that, <laughs> right? You know, because we do, we hang on to past experiences. And I want to make it very clear. They're telling me right now, this is not something that is, um, for all of you, going to be really, really obvious, okay? It is something that's a little hidden. It's a little behind the scenes. Um, this isn't to make you paranoid or anything like that. This is just saying there are things that we are all still hanging on to, as we've been saying, and I already said in this video, that are coming up to the surface to be looked at. In this one dream, there was this young woman who, 
for whatever reason, wouldn't stop laughing. Everything I said, she would just laugh. Every, every time, and she didn't, I could tell in the dream that she didn't mean any harm, but she wouldn't stop laughing. And when I woke up in that dream, I was like angry. <laughs> I was like, that got on my nerves so bad because, oh my God, everything was funny to her. And I had to look at what that meant for me, you know, and, and people's reactions to me. And do I feel like I'm being taken seriously? Cause that's really what this dream was about was this person who I saw as she's young, she's beautiful, she's better than me. And everything, I'm just a joke to her. I think that's really what it was. Um, and feeling like I'm not being taken seriously. So weird little things like that. You guys know, I'll sit here and share quite a bit with you. <laughs> so there's that. And actually, you won't believe it. They're telling me your sister's birthday's on the 21st. Don't forget. So Kim, happy birthday. Her birthday is on January 21st. I love you so much. And I hope you have the most blessed year ever in every way. <laughs> All right. So back into the message here. There's another uh, message coming through about what we see as past lives. So we need to talk about this now because we're going to start breaking open our thinking and letting some of those things be healed, be processed, to be realized. You know, this is going to help us start to understand this other part. So we'll, we'll always get different information, I'm sure, as we evolve as human beings and as we can understand things more clearly, it'll start to come through. But this next stage of maybe thinking of it like this is past lives. So we have this linear thinking, right? And a lot of ancient traditions think of it and call it past lives. And so people grab onto that and like ancient wisdom, you know, it's everything. I'm not saying it's not, but don't worship it. Okay. Be careful because that was, we can still use that wisdom. Watch the comments on this one. Oh my gosh. Can't wait. Um, <laughs> but you know, people will hang on to that as a truth and then you're getting yourself stuck and you're not really applying it, right? That still, that mostly applied to people of that era and yes, it still applies now, but we're ask, being asked to use it in a different way, okay? So as far as our timelines, I've always had that one message come in where it was like we're, we're existing in many different timelines all at once and they all kind of loop around one another and when they intersect, you can get a little confused. Uh, people who have too many intersections, they really start to have problems. They don't know who they are. They don't have a sense of identity. Pops all over the place, right? In this case, I got a message that it, within each one of those looping timelines, there is a string, okay? So there's a string of events that happen. And so in that way of thinking it, you uh, thinking of it, you do have kind of like past lives, right? But that's not all of what you are. Make sense? We are super expanded beings. We are beings that are very, I keep saying electrical, um, but we have a lot of energy, right? And so we're going to start learning what that energy is and how to work with it, not manipulate it, right? Not try to contrive a life that we think will make us happy, but rather learning to come into the heart space and embrace what is happening as it is, right? So if things aren't turning out exactly the way you want, getting into your intellect and trying to like, I know vision boards are so popular with people out there, but if you're just doing the, the vision board and you're just doing it from the mental state, you're not doing it. Oh, yes, I am. I got my car. Yeah, and I bet there will be some bit of energy that comes back and smacks you. Why? Because you weren't in the heart space and maybe you weren't manifesting things for the right reason, right? With good intentions. <laughs> wanting, I think I've used this example before, wanting a nice house for your family so that you're, they're safe and protected and there's like a nice energy in the home. It feels like a sanctuary. You know, it's, it's your little family bubble, <laughs> right? Where you can come back together after everybody goes to school and work and whatever. Um, that's a beautiful intention. If you want to manifest a house so that you look like you're a high roller, think of all those ads that come in. Uh, well, they used to. I don't know if they do anymore, but a lot of the ads that would run on some YouTube videos. It was like, here, here let me give you my you know, house tour. And I went from living in my car to owning this mansion. And now I'm like, and they're defining that their, their whole story is supposed to be an example of extreme success. What do I do with this? How do I explain this? Uh, <laughs> that's not a bad thing. 
If you like opulence, hey, no problem. There's something about that, right? But again, it's the intention behind it. If anything that you have is meant to be flashy, to show that you have power, to show that you are above everyone else. Think of that in dating too. Mm -hmm. How many people want to get with somebody who's considered a trophy, right? Um, A symbol of power. If we're just thinking in like, you know, male, female terms, I know it's like relationships can be so many different combos, right? (laughs) But just in that dynamic, just to be uh, a little basic here for a second, forgive me. um, You know, sometimes women will go for very wealthy, powerful men just because they want to feel protection or just because they want to feel like they have power because maybe they feel like on their own they don't. Or men might want to have that trophy wife, what we call a trophy wife, on his arm just so everybody sees him as more attractive. And, you know, if he can get a woman like that, wow, you know, like look at him, he's got to be something, right? (laughs) So that's the old way of thinking of things and we are coming around from that. Now, here's, here's the wonderful thing, okay? I really did that harmony. Let that be our key word for this week, guys. Harmony. Yes. Balancing. It's Archangel Sandalfin kind of energy, right? So balancing the physical with the spiritual, feeling good in your skin and embracing being human while you are human. Yes. Doing this kind of work. I've been exposed to every kind of expression of a human being you can imagine. I, f- I feel like I've heard it all. <laughs> like, I really feel like I've heard it all. As a stellium Scorpio, I kind of like that. I like knowing what makes people tick. I like getting to the bottom of things. But um, there are some very, very interesting perspectives out there. And no one can ever say, hey, that can't be, right? Because we don't know. <laughs> this whole existence is a surprise a minute, right? But uh, we really want to be careful. I've, I've seen as my channel has been growing a little bit. Again, thank you all. Um, but as it's been growing... Even though my email says business inquiries only, people have been using that to come and go, I knew I was special. I knew I talked to this angel and I talked to this angel and I know that I am an angel. I need to go back and watch my own angelic strain video because I may have misspoken in that just because of the response. I, I was talking more about being on angelic mission and having the toolkit to be able to do that kind of work. People are taking that as they are actual incarnated angels. Again, I got to go back and watch that and just just see where people are getting that from. But I get a lot of emails about that too. I'm an incarnated angel. I I work, oh God, this one, this one, this one. I work with the seraphim. You guys have heard me talk about that one before. Um, It's just all ego stuff. It's all ego. And they're just using this to try to seem special. And is that irritating? Little. (laughs) But is it more something that needs compassion? Absolutely. And I'm not sitting over here going, and I never do anything to try to seem special. We all want to be taken seriously. Remember the dream I just told you about? Um, We all want to feel like we're doing good things and that we aren't being laughed at or criticized or, you know, we want to feel understood and we want to understand others. Because in that wave of understanding, now our hearts are open. And now even with a stranger, that it's like telepathy. Yeah, they're saying it's a development of what you, he, they're saying it's a he, Metatron. It's what you call uh, telepathy. P.S. We have Gabriel, we have Sandalfin, we have Metatron, we have Haniel, we have Raziel, we have Uriel. Who else is here? <laughs> Ariel. They are crowding in here. And the way I open uh, the invitation when I started recording this was any archangel that wanted to come forward, come on in if you have a message for us. So this is taking wisdom and not twisting it to fit to fit you, right? I've said this a million times, I'll say it again. Anytime someone wants to come up and tell you, no, 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 no. You don't know how it is especially when it comes to spirituality, uh, run away from them, okay? So this is probably somebody who's just trying to, again, because maybe they're not uh, feeling comfortable in their own skin, they have to put the attention outside of them and criticize other people or diminish what, you know, how you believe or what you love or 
whatever as silly and a waste of time and whatever, just, just so they feel better about themselves. And isn't this an interesting message to have compassion? That's hard. It's really hard. Because, I mean, <laughs> you know, we have been wired and sort of programmed to, to be there for yourself. You know what I mean? Everyone has to fight for themselves. It's eat or be eaten. So this week is a chance to kind of twist out of that a little bit, okay? And just be observing. Just be observing. Not overanalyzing. Just observing. All right? Anything else on that, guys, before we move on? Okay, they're kind of being level, so I think we're good. So let me just grab the deck here. All right. <laughs> so if you guys notice, I'm in a different portion of my home trying out new things. I got a few new pieces here to, you know, switch up the background and everything, <laughs> which now you can't see. You can't see my beautiful gigantic clock over here, but it's cool. It's more important that we get these things in the shot, right? I dropped a card. <laughs> Hang on. And now I'm all hooked up to my mic. So, okay, okay, okay. We got this. We got this. We can do this. Okay, I'm back. Okay. <laughs> I'm all hooked up and wired up here. And I had to crawl on the floor and get this card. So what we have here is black tourmaline protection. Now, this, they're saying, is a big reason why people will shove others away. Um, if you've noticed, if you're somebody who's very kind, sweet, friendly, <laughs> people will look at you as if you're weak, right? Or if you're doing something considerate for someone else, they're like, why are you doing this? Maybe suspicious. Um, and we'll get back to this here in just a second, but I'm thinking of the example uh, I think I've shared before, like mostly I end up being friends with couples. And even though there's two of them and one of me, they never think to maybe arrive five minutes early, maybe just arrive five minutes early so that I don't have to walk into the place by myself. <laughs> right? They never do that. Usually I'm the one sitting there by myself waiting on the couple to arrive, whatever. So it's the little things like that. You know, we want to start thinking about others in a way of what can I do? When, we, when people say, how can I serve? You know, serving with kindness and consideration is a great place to start. Yes. Now you might be sitting here saying, well, what does that have to do with black tourmaline protection? Number one, we all want to feel protected. How do we sometimes feel protected? It doesn't mean that you're in danger necessarily and you need a bodyguard, <laughs> right? Um, or you need psychic protection. Some of you do. But this is more about when we feel like we're being thought of. There's some sense of safety that comes from that, okay? When we see somebody do some small gesture, right, to show that they care, that can make us feel very at home within our bodies, and now we feel safer. Does that make sense? This is a card of us looking out for one another and not competing, okay? The next card we have is <laughs> New My healer so we have to heal not only ourselves this is a big time of that healing we talked about that but this is talking about healing one another now this is another thing that i hear all the time i know i'm a healer i know you no know, maybe not i mean maybe you are a healer but what i'm saying you don't have to go out and be a reiki practitioner to heal people you just need to show up where your talents lie and the people that you know you're supposed to learn lessons from or who are supposed to learn lessons from you, probably both of you at the same time, <laughs> that healing that takes place in that kind of connection, you just need to be present and you just need to be you, all right? So that is an important message for the healer card. And because I have a different uh, setup here, I will do some B-roll so that we can see the cards. I actually didn't put down the, um, the first card, but I'll have to remember what it is. <laughs> so the next card we have here is Opal Joy. Now this is saying, if you want your key to happiness, it's relaxing on what you think will make you happy. Nobody's ever happy striving. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. Excuse me. You know, you like waking up super early in the morning and okay. I, I was about to start using an example. I will not I don't want to get myself into trouble. But getting up super early and feeling pressured to do this whole morning routine because some, that's someone else's mark of success is by going through this whole thing. And then you have to, maybe you're really, you know, 
one of those high executives that takes a car and a driver to, <laughs> to work or whatever, and they come pick you up. And maybe that makes you feel powerful, but are you joyful? I used to work for some of the highest level people out there when I lived in New York City and because uh, I was a temp when I first moved there. And so they would pop me in. If I named some names, you would know who they are. <laughs> but, um, you know, these are people featured in all the the magazines as some of the most successful people in the world. And they were miserable. They're miserable. So we'll be talking about, about joy. <laughs> Our key to success and especially this week, is tapping into the harmony, letting things come up to the surface without being afraid of it, without uh, letting the ego get in there and be like, oh, I knew I was super open. We were talking about, we touched on that a little bit about the ego using spirituality to feed your specialness, right? Don't do that, okay? But this is asking for you to take some time for yourself, not in a selfish way, not in a contrived way, like, oh, I'm just gonna take some me time, but really embrace every single moment and everything that's already happening in your world. And tr yeah, they're saying stop trying to run away from yourselves. What's your path? It's happening right now. This isn't my path. I haven't made it yet. How awful to think that of yourself. <laughs> I mean, you are already operating, whether you like your circumstances or not, you're already operating at a high frequency, some of you, okay? But some of you end up, dipping down because of expectations, right? So you're doing good. And then you're like, oh, I don't have enough. Oh, my house isn't nice enough. Oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not thin enough. I'm not, you know, whatever, whatever. I'm going to love my room. We all do it. We all do it. So find the joy in the small things. Be there for one another, all right? And that will be very, very healing. And practice gratitude. We have hit and I gratitude. I mean, this is that kind of energy that we want to be in this week. If we're going to foster this understanding, if you really want to start understanding what the next level of spiritual growth is, it has nothing. I'm going to tell you right now. Oh gosh, I'm going to get attacked for this one too. Maybe. <laughs> See, there, there's a perfect example of my fear. My fear. You know why? Believe it or not, I'm an introvert. And putting myself out there that's a, that's a very fearful thing. Now, putting myself in front of a camera, this isn't so spooky. But when it goes up and people see me and they start having their opinions of me and they want to argue with me and they want to have a confrontation with me, yes, I've practiced setting boundaries or even using humor. <laughs> you know, being like whatever to kind of diffuse it a little bit. Um, but, you know, it's my fear. And that's why I just said, oh my God, people are going to attack me. Why would I say that? I don't know. Why would I say that? Here I am, a human being, living as a human being in front of you. Here I am. I'm Michelle Patterson, and I am not perfect, nor will I ever be, nor will you, right? So let's just have gratitude about where we are. <laughs> and I was going to say, you know, people are going to come out and, and try to control things or say, no, I, I know the way, and, and that's all there is. But if, if we keep trying to contrive our existence, it's not going to get us anywhere. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So practicing gratitude for all the experiences that we have, um, you know, gratitude for having one another, whether it's kind of a not so nice scenario, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, there have been plenty of relationships that people experience and, you know, people might look at that and say, well, that was a horrible breakup. But stop and think this week. What did you learn from it? Okay. What did you learn from it? So I was getting ready to say, excuse me, I, I got off track. Um, I was about to say the future of our spirituality has little to do with ceremony. Yeah, yeah, it has little to do with ceremony. Now, some of us who love the beauty of a ceremony, right? Um, you still want to have things set up in a certain way. You still, because that does something for you. That's beautiful. You go right ahead. You are not wrong if you want to do things a certain way, but it won't be necessary. Ooh, why? The news is good, right? The news is good because we are becoming a little bit smarter and a little more in tune as human beings. And so all of that won't, after a while, won't be necessary, okay? All right, so let's get the color card and let's see what we have going on here. Oh, come on with the color card falling on the floor. Oh, 
I have to get it. Oh, dang it. Ouch. Uh, see, every time I go onto the floor and I come up, I now I gotta with the thing and the thing. Now my shirt's coming up and like, it's a whole thing. Listen, <laughs> but here we're gonna pull two color cards because now I'm a mess, okay? We're gonna pull two because we had this fallout. So this is black. Uh, find richness from the dark of night. The number is 28. People tend to get a little spooked out by this card because they think that this is, you know, it's dark. It's a black card. We have black tourmaline. You know, I, I feel like though this is more of a message of come out of the darkness. Come out of this thing where we think spirituality is beyond us or our spiritual understanding of ourselves is somewhere outside of us. That's done. That time is done. We're starting to realize it's already within us. And we, <laughs> I can't drive this home enough. We can't, you're going to go back into the black. You're going to go back into the darkness. If you start taking those spiritual awakening moments and using them as an ego thing, like, oh, oh God, how many times have you guys heard this one? What do I do about my family members who don't want to be woke with me? As soon as you use that term, so woke, you're not woke. Excuse me. Blu-ray mama for the indigos. Okay, I'm here. And I'm not as entertained by you as some other people are. Oh my God, that's so offensive to the indigos. Oh my God. Oh my God. If indigo comes out of this, I will apologize. But what I'm getting at here is that we don't, don't, don't get self-centered about what you think you're doing right. Careful. Careful. Like, I'm going to be learning too. There are going to be ways that I've been approaching things. Again, you know, um, not being as comfortable being exposed on a YouTube channel, <laughs> right, has usually set me on edge. Not that I'm an edgy person necessarily. It's just you put up with a lot when you're on YouTube. A lot. You'll have other YouTubers come in and stick their noses in. I had a, a someone who's a medium stick her nose in when I had... Um, I had somebody who was stalking me. It was a religious person who was like really extreme religious and had been uh, sending me nasty emails, spamming my channel. And then when I finally, you know, spoke up to this person and said, enough, this other YouTuber stuck her nose in and diminished me for responding to this person. That is the kind of stuff that we have going on. So when we're working towards the peace and the harmony, I don't know what that looks like. I'll have to take it situation by situation because I don't know that not setting a boundary or, you know, just ignoring that medium who stuck her nose in. I don't think so. <laughs> you know, I don't know about that. But what are the pain points in us? What is touchy for us, right? Let's get another color card, as I said. Lemon. Access innovative thinking. The number is 23. I feel like this is change. And this is finding your center and this is finding your light and it's finding out um, what turns do you want to make, right? Again, I was just giving that example about, uh, you know, communication. It's not fun for me to have to feel like I have to go to battle <laughs> with people who came in to have a battle. Oh, Michelle, if you were really spiritual, you would just rise above. See, that's like spiritual ego stuff. Stop spewing that. Just stop, Okay. Stop acting like you're above everybody, right? We're all human. We're all wired a certain way. We all have our reactions. This is the week where we start to become aware of that. And I want to make this clear. It's not like you have to start beating yourself up. That compassion we were talking about in the beginning, that's also having compassion for yourself and going, you know what? Maybe I am afraid of this, this, and this. Where does that come from? So you can't just do this whole thing of, oh, I'm just going to release that. It's not going to work. You got to look at it, Okay. And then when you understand where it came from, now you can start letting it flow away and maybe approaching everything in your life from a different angle. Okay. So that's the kind of week we're having. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.